Now we got the one and only, mate. The train land where the train was. The train is still going. What's going on, Nate? How you doing, brother? Good, man. This guy, man. I was stuck in Detroit yesterday for five hours on a delayed plane. I finally made it home on Easter, so it felt good. That's all you need. You go out there, you put on a show like that, and then you get delayed and stuck in Detroit of all goddamn places <laughs> yeah, for five like, hours. Yeah. That's where I see. That's where I see Buckhead. They came through Detroit. I was like, okay, <laughs> that's why. So J- Jamal Emmers, you got the job done. It was a beautiful KO round one. Emmers, very very good pedigree. He's a really strong. Yeah, boxer. man. I think I think his is actually his resume is worse than he is. I looked him up. I think he beat that Gigi. I think he beat Giga, Gigi Jamaya. And I think he beat um, Jack Jenkins, too. Both of mm-hmm. them. I think he should literally be, without getting heel hooked, the hell he dropped Pat. So he could be literally, he could have been undefeated in the UFC, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, no, he's really good. Really good. Uh, he was coming off the back of a big win over Dennis Bazookia, who got a win Saturday night. Yeah. And he, he connected with a few shots. He was looking slick early. And then you turned it around with the pressure. You got the job done. You got the finish. Walk us through the fight, though, from your perspective, please. Yeah, man, for real. Fighting's all about it, what you is and what you ain't. You can't be what you ain't, you know what I mean? So he was faster, but I, I timed him, hit him with the uppercut, and got his ass out of there. What, uh, you don't seem like the type of guy that worries too much about shit move, going into a fight. But like, if there was anything you guys were kind of focused on in training camp, what's that thing you guys were like? All right, we got to stay away from here. Let's let's steer away from this shit. Oh man, I just just looking back on my career. As long as I don't get need, I feel like I'm winning. That's the only way I got got. <laughs> my 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 major losses come from Dan Ige and getting need in the face. So I wasn't fighting Dan, and as long as I don't get need, I'm probably gonna win. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, all right. I mean, you've highlighted the two losses uh, that you had in the UFC, but you've had a lot of wins now as well. And your star is growing in a big way. In fact, who was it? Someone was saying, this is bullshit. I don't get the push. Like Nate the Train. Nate the Train's uh, getting the real big push and they weren't. But do you feel that? Do you feel the levels of recognition for the hard work that you're doing now? Because as fighters, you know, it's it's great to win. Making money is awesome. But uh, I'm not talking about money and I'm not talking about fame, but just to, be respect. recognized for the sacrifices and respected that respect you're making. Respected by other men. To be yeah. respected by respected man. You know what I mean? No, yeah. but uh, yeah, it's, it's the way that I that live my life, man. Uh, never took an easy fight. Never took a shortcut. Never made an excuse. If I got something going on in camp, you'll never hear me. Man, I was sick. I stubbed my toe. I broke a finger. All these guys, the thing that they're going to brag about, the same thing they're gonna make excuse about if they don't win. I think these guys they they win and they'll brag about being sick and they'll brag about being hurt during camp. They lose, they'll be like, man, but I was hurt. But me, I never make excuse. And it's the people that I fought on the way to the UFC. I fought 20, this is my 23rd fight. Between those 23 people, my opponents have like 157 finishes between them all. I mean, 257 finishes. Between the three, three, uh, the twenty-three guys I fought, wow. I fought nothing Jeez. but finishers, nothing but winners. <laughs> I don't fight guy. I got. I fight a guy. He gonna go on a win streak after. I don't fight losers. I fight champions. I fight people that want to win, that's destined to win, and I beat them. You know. You know what? I I just realized as you were talking. I don't ever hear you talk too much about where you're going either. Like you, you never, I've never heard you make it I've obviously never heard you make an excuse or, or, or really talk too badly about anybody, but like you always want that next big fight, but I've never heard you talk too much about like the end goal. Like what does the end result look like for you? Like where, like where to are you not, headed? Man, my, my goal has always been to not quit fighting is to retire. I hate when people be like, I'm retiring. Well, you ain't really retiring unless you got some money. You just quitting. <laughs> Yeah. So the end result's always been for me is to feed my family and fund and fund my future, man, and uh make some badass footage on the way I fight like I'm already done. I'm looking back on it and I'm trying to add tallies. You can retire when you've got one eye though on the good up, just in my defense. <laughs> <laughs> that too, yeah. But think about it, that one good eye that you have was looking at some money. <laughs> it was, it was, it was. It still is. Um, oh, Nate, shit. I could talk to you all day, but you said something last week because I know you're so proud 
to represent Clarksville, Tennessee. They've got the Nate uh, the Nate, Nate Langworth Day, right? Is that still a yeah, thing? Yeah, we got the Nate the Train Day. Nate the Train Day, there it is, which is just unbelievable. Congrats on that. i got to come to a Nate the Train Day. I bet that's wild. But you were talking, though, because in December, your town, Clarksville, it was hit by uh, some pretty serious tornadoes, right? And there's a lot of damage. Yeah, it I destroyed. Think, what, it seven destroyed people it, passed yeah. away. Yeah, it I mean, was not a good time. But, you know, my city is resilient. The same day it happened, I'm talking about Anybody where the truck was out, getting all the all the stores was empty in a good way. It wasn't a bad way empty. Everybody was buying stuff to give. You know what I mean? You know, sometimes when a disaster happens, you go to the store and everything's cleared off the shelves because people hoarding it and they being greedy. Everything was cleared off the shelf because people wanted to give to somebody who needed it. And it's uh, we got a big military base. We the home of the 101. The you know, so we got the Night Stalkers, Fort Campbell big time uh, army base and man, we, we strong over here. That's beautiful though. And when you hear things like that, it restores your faith in humanity. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because a lot of the time in the media, you just hear about doom and gloom and shittiness and just tragedies. But to hear people going out there emptying the shelves to give to other people, that's amazing. What is the population there? I would say about, it's hard to say because it's like we got we're basically two cities because we're right on the we we're right on the border of uh, Kentucky, so we got the Fort Campbell base. I would say about two hundred thousand altogether. Okay, two hundred thousand. We got a big uh, college, uh, Austin P State University, D one school, and then we got the the Army base that brings people in. Plus, we're about an hour away from Nashville, so that's been that's been bringing in a bunch of cats. Nice. What do you? So, what do you do in your spare time? Yeah, unfortunately. I've tried to drag this out of you once before, too. What do you do, like, in your free time when you're not punching people in the face on ESPN and then training? Like, what do you, like, what do you, oh, just, like, what do you, well, last time he was decorating the house. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm an avid, I like painting. That's what I do. I paint houses. And uh, I'm an avid gardener, man. Love no gardening. shit. I've been what are you growing? Really? What are you growing? I grow everything I can eat, man. Uh, when I'm in town, it's crazy because it's like I'm out here fighting my ass off to live a life that sometimes I don't get to live because I do my camps down in South Florida. So I got to go do that time, man. Mm-hmm. And uh, just it fuels the fire when I'm because it's like I got to be away now, not only away from my, my wife and my rest of my family, but I'm away from my son. And it just drives me. And when I'm home, I'm growing food. I, I grow everything. I got vegetables. I got fruit trees. I got little uh, fruit bushes. I, I mean, I'm talking about everything you could think of. I got it. No shit. Wow. So do, do you hate so you, do you hate leaving? On, you got you got a farm? No. Yeah, yeah. I got about two acres. Oh, yeah. yeah. How many? About two acres. There you go. That's enough. That's enough. Yeah, that's do, enough. do you uh, – do you – so I'm in training camp right now. I live in Nebraska, but I do my training camps in Denver. So I'm in Denver. I'm away too. So do you hate it when you're gone? Like every second of it? It's not like a hate, but it's more like a um, a necessary evil. Like, man, it's like, I hate the fact that I got pushed out because it's like, I would love to do my training camps here, but it just, it's not, it's not built for that. I didn't have enough people. So it's kind of like I got four, I had a force. But you got to grow. What are you going to do? Stay behind? So you right. got to fill that gap. So you go somewhere mm-hmm. where it fills that gap. And it's like, I think the thing that is good about it is that um, when I'm away, think about when you're at home, you're, the, you're a father, you're the owner, I'm a gardener. I'm a, so many things when you're at the house. Mm-hmm. And when you're away at a training camp, you want thing, a motherfucker on a mission. Yeah. So that in that aspect, it's, 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 all, it's like, okay. Laser yeah. focus. Let's go. Somebody's gonna pay for this. Yeah, I always say that when I started training here in 2016 or 2017, I was so pissed about it because I just wanted. I wish I could just have this at home. But I feel like if I had this exact same thing at home, it wouldn't be as good because now I'm you're mowing the grass in the morning and then you're going to practice and then you're picking your kid exactly. up from school and then going back to practice. Like it, you got to turn that switch on and off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To grind. 100%, I hate it. Yeah. I, I hate it, but way. it's necessary. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it also it also fuels you as well because as you just said, you're mowing the lawn or you're coming back and you're just messing around with day to day bullshit. Now mm-hmm. you're locked in, you're at a dorm, you're in a hotel at Bear B, wherever it is that you live, 
just thinking about the fight 24 7 getting ready it's kind of like fantasizing. just going through it yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah going crazy in your mind training like a but you know mad when man. i get that mic i'm gonna say something give me that yeah. mic i'm gonna but you know what? I got to beat somebody up just to say some shit. <laughs> what did you say Saturday night? I can't remember. I was too busy trying to like get the microphone to your bicep because you kept doing this. And I'm like, motherfucker, <laughs> I got to get past the biceps. <laughs> yeah, I got to start, start bringing a little dumbbell in there with me. So I had a couple in. <laughs> so, mate, you seem like a very, very chilled guy. But in the octagon, I mean, you, you, you're a wild guy. I love the way you fight. I love the ferocity and the aggression that you bring, but also you got strategy as well. On the microphone, you're a promoter's dream. You know what I mean? You've always got some great Ric Flair, WWE-style promos, but you seem like a, a very chilled-out guy. You know, you're on the farm. You're growing your, your vegetables. So this is like, is it like two versions of Nate the Train? I think it's just like in general, every 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 man has multiple facets of them. You know what I mean? Nobody's just one thing. To my wife, I'm a I'm not the same thing as I would to be to a stranger trying to steal something from me. You know what I mean? To my son, I'm not the same as I would be. You know what I mean? Everybody has these mm -hmm. different facets about them. And when y'all see me in the cage, I'm in battle mode. And then when you see yeah. me with the mic, I just want, obviously I won. You ain't going to give me the mic if I ain't wearing something. I obviously hyped up to the point to where I just, the highest high you could feel. I mean, y'all two can relate to it. There's no high like that one high. Mm. It kind of, that's why when these kids ask me, what's one of the takeaways about fighting? And it's going to go down the rest of them Saturdays. <laughs> There's 52 Saturdays a year. And uh, you feel one of them things like this. The mother 51 ain't going to be quite like that. You can have a good <laughs> time, is. but it ain't going to be like that time. You're so right. Did you make a call outside there? I can't remember. I didn't. I, it's just one of those things that I got this big ass cut on my head. I'm just trying to see how the division plays out, man. And, and I don't know how long it's going to take me to get back. But you know who I always wanted to fight? We came in the UFC around the same time as Billy Q. But he just took that L. But man, he's still a gangster. Mm -hmm. He got I that think cardio. you should be looking at the savage. rankings. Yeah, so the like UFC rankings, want man. me to pop off, and I want another shot at them rankings. But I mean, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of good fighters. You got Nathan Nathaniel Woods is good. You got, um, of course, you got Dan Eager. I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind having it. Uh, Julian Alex Rosa Caceres fight back. is number fifteen. Caceres, I wouldn't mind fighting Caceres because we were supposed to fight. Didn't get that fight. So, I mean, there's so many possibilities. It's whatever the UFC want. They want me to go against a banger. They want me to prove myself top t uh, top 15. I'm down. They, yeah, I know, hoping... I'm, they already know I'm down, though. <laughs> like, they, they don't even got to call you first. They call you second. Yeah, my, my, my manager just calls me. I'm like, yes. And they're like, no, I didn't call you for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but shout out to Brian Butler. Every time he calls me, I'm just like, Yes, win. He's like, <laughs> no, I was just calling to tell you that uh, something else. So you, something else. you guys all got the same manager, right? <laughs> yeah, me and Buck do, yeah. Him and Buckley, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Brian's just my buddy. I like talking oh, to Brian. He's a, yeah, he's a, no, he's a he's, different type of dude. I like talking to him, yeah. He's top tier. I call him Uncle Brian. He's like a good uncle. I feel like every, every time I do something stupid in the media, Brian calls. <laughs> so anytime his phone, like his name pops up on my phone, I'm like, I must have said nah, something he's stupid because he's called. He's go ahead and run, run for politician of some sort. The president. So you back at home now? You back in? Something. You back in Clarksville? Back in Clarksville. Yeah, I got home last night. Yeah. I'm, I'm what's the plan for the rest of the week? Plan for the rest of the week. I don't got uh, just chill. Let this heal. See that. See my. Uh, see my. All my. See all my family lives in Clarksville. So my mom is, has a big a, a big family. So I got a bunch of aunts and a. Uh, Cousins and so I see them, see my nephew, see my sister, see my brother, see everybody. I ain't been to see all my homies that I ain't seen. You know, you got these friends that you ain't you friends with, but only friends you really got is the mats, the mitts, and the heavy bag for a while. So get to see all them and uh, spend some time with my family, plant some plant some seeds. I gotta get these potatoes in the ground. I'm a little late. <laughs> you better get Beautiful. after it. Beautiful man, and I'm jealous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When well, you on that garden, when you on that garden lifestyle, you gotta live a different cycle. It's like, hold on, I'm a couple of weeks late, baby. <laughs> Shit. Get the potato seeds in, but we won't keep you any any longer, Nate. 
Big fan. Congratulations. Right, Saturday night, phenomenal performance once again. And uh, I look forward to the next one. Not Enjoy your week. Nice. Enjoy out, the planting. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. All right, Mike. All right, my Take man. Take it easy, brother. Take care, man. All right.